Hello again, it's uh, Andrew Homer from London Brooks College, and I want to talk about a few revision topics here. Um, I'm going to focus on a few questions that students ask me, and so I thought I'd run through a few little explanations that might be of benefit to you. <laughs> topic that crops up at GCSE and A-level is rates of reaction. So the question I would ask students straight away is what factors can affect the rate of a reaction? Um, we have things like temperature, concentration, pressure for gases, surface area, so if you've got a liquid and a solid, or a gas and a solid, or also catalysts, all of those factors will affect the rate of a reaction. I want to focus on catalyst because I often get questions about that. People are a bit perplexed about what a catalyst is and how it might work. In some ways, it's a bit of a magician in chemistry, and so I'll say a quick few words about that. Before I start that, let me just say a few preliminaries. For a reaction to occur, we need to have a collision between two molecules. Now, that collision needs to have sufficient energy for it to proceed through to the products. And there is a threshold of energy known as the activation energy, which is required before any reaction can occur. If I take, for example, this little lighter here, um, the fuel coming out of that lighter is not exploding spontaneously. It needs a little bit of a kickstart to make it begin like that. So that's the activation energy. That provides a kick, a bit of an energy impulse to get the reactant molecules to um, collide with each other and allow their electrons to mingle to go through to products. So if I just write something here, all chemical reactions are a little chemical journey. All chemical reactions start off with reactants going through to products. If I have energy over here, reactants and say my products have got that energy over there. For that reaction to start, I need to give it a little bit of a push. You can imagine it being like a car on a hill. You have to give it a bit of a push over the hill. And so this little input here, like lighting the lighter there, that is called the activation energy. So if I mark that on, activation energy, EA. This is the minimum energy to start a reaction. All reactions have an activation energy. Some reactions it's very small, some it's considerably larger. Okay, so that's my preliminaries. Um, if we think about a catalyst, let's focus about catalysts. First thing to ask, what is a catalyst? A catalyst is a chemical that will speed up a chemical reaction, um, but the chemical remains unchanged at the end. Okay, so they're extremely useful because um, it will speed the reaction up, but can be retained at the end. It can be cleaned up and used again. And that seems a little bit fanciful, doesn't it? How can a chemical do that? But that's exactly how they work. Um, very well-known examples, har the harbour process to make ammonia, to make fertilisers. For example, this reaction, nitrogen, reacts with hydrogen to form ammonia. These are all gases. And the catalyst is iron. Iron metal. If you think about being in the, at home in the kitchen, you might have some margarine or some spread in the fridge. Um, that was made from an oil which has been saturated. It was an unsaturated oil and it's been saturated. That means we put a little bit of hydrogen into it by using a nickel catalyst. Sulfuric acid is made using another catalyst called vanadium pentoxide. There are loads and loads of these catalysts. The students will say to me, how can you have something happening without the catalyst not actually being involved? So I tell them a little story, a little analogy. My little analogy is like this. So imagine I've got a river here. I 
fast flowing river. And Brooks College has a little outward bound team. Okay, they've gone across the countryside and the finishing line is over here. And Team Brooks These are energetic students who are stood over here. Etc. So these students have got to get from this side of the river over to there. Okay, so if you can imagine that a bit like reactants going to products. So students have got to get across the river. Now, to swim across uses lots and lots of energy. And that is what would the reaction would be like without a catalyst. It uses lots and lots of energy to get across to get to the finish over here. So the question I then ask students, what could I do to make that a lot easier? What, what's a simple solution so, the stu so this team, our team Brooks, could get across the river easily? And the answer is build a bridge. Okay, so a bridge enabling the students to go across to the finish, that is how a catalyst works. It provides an easier route that has a lower activation energy. Right, it doesn't actually lower the activation energy, but it finds a quicker, easier route, an easier way to do the reaction. Okay, so we get over there much more easily. And Asking the question, does the catalyst get used up? No, of course it doesn't. The bridge can be used over and over again. Um, it just provides an easier route. Another analogy to that would be if I've got a hill here and I've got my team of students over here and the finish is over there. If we've got to get to the other side to the finishing line, a lot of effort, huge amount of effort to get over the hill to get to the finish, how would a catalyst help in that little story? So in my analogy here, anyone know the answer? What the catalyst does is build a tunnel, a tunnel straight through so we can move across to the finish. Much less energy required, we get to the finishing line. Okay, so the catalyst provides an easier route with a lower activation energy and it can be used over and over again. Thank you.